Welcome back. Last month, state GOP lawmakers in Maryland proposed new options in an effort to modernize the state pension system. Jim, do you think many Democrats will be in favor or go along with this? You know, I don't know, but I think this is a perfect example of where we need to try to find common ground between Democrats and Republicans. Because guess what, guys? You know, it's great to get up on your soapbox and say, this way or the highway, but nothing gets done. Governing is not about getting your way all the time. Governing is about choosing. Governing is about yeah. negotiating, not to use a Donald Government Trump Government is not term. campaigning. <laughs> Government is about so. coming to an equitable, albeit not perfect, conclusion. Mm -hmm. And yeah. how long has have the citizens of Maryland heard about the pension system, whether it's the state employees pension system or whether it's the school employees pension systems, you name it. We've heard about this now for 15 years. Right. So it is time to modernize it. I'm not smart enough to know what the right answer is, but I can tell you something. Andy Serafini, who is one of our delegates in, in Annapolis, you know what he does when he's not in Annapolis? Yes. Mm -hmm. He works with people's pensions and investments. Yes, yep. he does. So I trust the yeah. fact that yeah. Andy Serafini knows what he's talking about, and he seems to be, he seems to think there's things that not, that not that we should do, that we have to do to modernize the system. Well, and, you know, it, it's important <laughs> to point out, you know, right now we, you know, Maryland has $20 billion in unfended pension mm -hmm. obligations. Mm -hmm. So that right there, I mean, that, that's not going down. No, it's That's not. just going to go up, all right? You need to fix the system before we run out of money because it's either you fix the system now or you're really going to have to scramble to fix it later or people just aren't going to get their pensions at all. And I don't think we want that. Now, did we read the, I, I presume all of us read what Andy Serafini's and the alternate proposals were. Um, they, you know, it, it seemed like a, not a bad return. I mean, they're guaranteeing, you know, 5% return and then it actually escalates up, which is far better because I think the current plan guarantees 18%. Eight, yep, 18.5%. 18.5%. Uh, 18 so this must have been put in back in the late 70s or early 80s when interest rates were at astronomical rates. Right. Um, it's these type of things that are cataclysmic to our governing system, our school system. You know, when we start to look at pensions equating a large portion of what it takes to educate a student, I'd rather see that money spent in the classrooms. I know the, I know the teachers and the service people within the school system need to have a, a decent retirement plan. But a few years ago, Annapolis pushed a lot of this burden back onto the local schools. Right. So, you know, th th we're living underneath the bad system that they wrote up. I don't want to take anything away from the teachers, but we have to be able to have money to, to, to fund the classrooms. Well, so, yeah, but uh, there's uh, other issues here, too, though. Sometimes the devil is in the details. You know, and one of the things is... Sometimes? <laughs> most times. Well, and here's one. You know, the bill removes protections for disabled state employees. So if you're a correctional officer who are already beat up enough by right. and ignored even by our own people in Annapolis from here, uh, they don't even have proper health care, really, let alone now this. And some of it is not very fair to these people. I worked in a prison in New York City briefly, you know, as a chaplain. Okay. And, and I saw, you know, some of the things. I understand this. There's highway employees. You can't just... But to, to, Jim's, to, to Jim's point, we understand those concerns. I'm sure Senator Serafini understands those concerns. Let's get Annapolis working on this issue so that we can address those concerns. Let's, get, yeah. let's move the ball forward. Yeah. Because and right I, now, the only thing we're doing go. is we're calling running plays yeah. when we need to start throwing well, the Well, the other yeah. thing we need to be cognizant of is our pension system affects our bond ratings right at some level at some level so but if we but it, well, i understand that but you know yeah yet. well it's not but but the point is we need to be cognizant of that too and that's yeah. what that's one of the few things that gives me 
gives me uh, hope that maybe the Democrats and Republicans will come together because yeah. we can't but continue with the status I mean, quo. You can see there's like devils in the details in the sense of like ideological things here that some people are not going to like on one side of the aisle where, you know, it kind of brings it on the side a little bit more private contributions to, you know, independent investments, which is what Serafini does for a living. Right. So, you know, and they're a little dubious of this, and a lot of people, and a lot of these employees, as most Americans, don't save much. Right. So it's not going to save them that way. It's an easy cop-out, you know, in a way to not really address the issues, you know. But I think it's a difficult issue. And, but I, I think there's some provisos here. They did it in, what, 2011, and there was hell to pay, you know, when they tried to do stuff then right. from state. Mm -hmm. So... Who knows? Hopefully, we can get. But at least they're talking about good. it. Yeah, <laughs> conversation. Okay. Up next, our panel takes a closer look at a bill in Maryland that is sure to spark some controversy. Stay tuned. <laughs>